Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on electrostatics. This is video number 14 and I'm going to discuss the electric field of an infinite plane. I'd like to draw your attention to my website universityphysicstories.com and also if you'd like to find out news or updates on what I'm doing follow me on Twitter at adambeatty503. So the previous video to this which is relevant is number 13 where I discuss Gauss's law and symmetry. So I'm going to do a bit of revision on that. So Gauss's law in integral form says that if you want to calculate the uh, the charge enclosed in due to your charges, we'll say divided by epsilon zero, you must compute a closed surface integral. And the integral has the dot product of your electric field of your source charges and the infinitesimal area element of some Gaussian surface. So to put that in perhaps simpler terms, let's say we have a spherical distribution, continuous distribution of charge. We need to come up with some sort of a surface larger than our source charges and we call this a Gaussian surface. So let's say for argument's sake I, I pick a triangular shape in two dimensions. Now in order to simplify this integral the only way we can do it is if E and A point in the same direction and that would mean that we could take out the integral out of the integral the uh, electric field because E, e dot dA is EA cos theta and if, cost of, if you have the cos of naught, well then we'll say you can take E outside. And that only happens if E and A point in the same direction. So how do we get E and A to point in the same direction? Well, you pick a smart Gaussian surface. So we know, for example, that the electric field of a spherical distribution points radially like this. That means that, but we'll say the normal element of our triangle is going to be in this direction, right? Is going to be like this. So that means at certain points, yes, the uh, the electric field and the normal of our of our surface point in the same direction, but they don't at every point. So this triangular Gaussian surface is no good for a uh, is no good for a spherical distribution of charge. So of course, for a spherical distribution of charge, we pick a sphere for obvious reasons. So in this problem, what we're going to analyze is the infinite conducting plane. So, to, just to look at it, I have the plane in red, and I've only drawn a segment of it, of course. Note that, for, by symmetry reasons, the electric field must point normal to the, the plane. Because it's infinite, so it, it cannot have a component in this direction because it's infinite. So it has to be, uh, we'll say, it can't have a component in the plane. So it has to be perpendicular to the plane, both above and below. That's very important, too. So, the Gaussian surface we pick for this is, is called a Gaussian a Gaussian pillbox and basically that's just it's just a, a box above and below the plane so I've drawn in blue at the box above the plane and in black dotted lines is uh, excuse me and black dots is the uh, is the the box below the line now you might say well hold up say it looks to me at the moment that there's going to be some contribution of, of DA par uh, will come from the uh, the edges but the point is we can shrink the thickness down to zero which will shrink the thickness of the volume, or will, will excuse me, shrink the volume down to zero, and we're left with the area being twice a, because we've half the area on top, but we also have the same amount below, so we have total area of two a. Notice if we pick the uh, if we pick this Gaussian pillbox, d a, the infinitesimal a volume element, excuse me, the infinitesimal area element, will point normal to the uh, normal to the surface, so it'll be n hat. It'll be like this. But notice the electric field is also in the n hat direction. So that means they point in the same direction. We're going to have the cos of naught in the dot product, and we can take the electric field outside of the integral. So what, what do we do next? Well, we compute the integral. So we're going to have the closed surface integral of dA. Okay? Now, that's very simply going to be E times 2A. Okay? Or twice E times A. Okay, very straightforward because the total area is going to be twice A as I've explained already. Next, let's look at the charge. So the charge encloses Q over epsilon zero. Now, I'm telling you that it's just, and you'll, you'll understand in a moment, it's of much better uh, use, or much more use, excuse me, if we can somehow write the charge in terms of the area. And we can do, we can do that. If we have a linear distribution of charge, when we, th we talk of lambda dl prime, if we have, if we have charge on a... Uh, on a plane or a surface, we talk about sigma dA prime, and if we are talking about a volume, we talk about rho d tau prime. So we're clearly talking about a distribution of charge on a plane, so it's sigma dA. 
Okay. Now if you think about it, we're going to have 1 over epsilon 0 sigma times a. Because if we go back to our plane, if we go back to our plane, right, so let's just draw one side of the Gaussian pillbox. Okay, this is the Gaussian pillbox on the top. This is going to, it, the area under the Gaussian uh, pillbox, which is on the plane, is going to be a. So the area dA will sum, will the integral, will say the integral of sigma dA is simply going to give us sigma times a. Alright? For, we'll say, this particular Gaussian pillbox. So that means that if we look just at the Gaussian pillbox, one Gaussian pillbox, we get um, that Q enclosed is sigma times a over epsilon zero. So if we put it all together, what we get is as follows. We get twice the electric field times the area of our pillbox is sigma times the area of our pillbox over epsilon zero. Or we can write the electric field as equal to, um, excuse me, sigma over twice epsilon zero. And we set up earlier on that it's in the normal direction to our plane. So we get sigma uh, over twice epsilon zero in the n hat direction is our electric field. Now this is very important. Or this is, there's something very strange after happening here and I don't know if you can appreciate it yet. Usually, let's say for example, if we took the electric field of a, uh, um, if we took the electric field of a point charge, we have 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, q over r squared, r hat. Okay, so the point here is that it depends, the electric field depends on how far you are away from the, the source charges observing it. But in this point, the, in this case, it doesn't, there seems to, it's independent of where you observe it, in, uh, or how far away from the plane you observe it. It's always going to be sigma over twice epsilon 0. That seems to make no sense because surely Coulomb's law dictates that it falls off at 1 over r squared. But the point is this, that, uh, let's just do a bit of a sketch, that let's say, let's say you are at, I don't know, let's say you're at this height observing it and say you can see this much, let's say you can see this much of charge. So the electric field is whatever it is. But let's say you move back further. So I move back to here and I'm observing for here. Now there is more charge which is, we'll say, visible to the observer or contributing to the electric field. So the point is that although I've moved back further, the amount of charge which I am seeing is also is after increasing. And this will always increase and decrease proportionally and thus cancel out. See the the electric field of an infinite plane, an infinite plane will always be sigma over twice epsilon zero. Full stop. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysicstorios.com.